Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this series of lectures, we are discussing about microscopy, light microscopy basics. And this video is all about basic of light microscopy that is regarding the principle of light microscopy. And in this video, we are going to discuss about the two major aspects of a bright field microscopy or a light microscopy. And in these two important features that you need to understand to answer any question from this topic in the upcoming biology or life science examinations so here this video will be in english mostly but beach beach mein main hindi mein bhi bolunga taake dono cheez mila ke samajh aa jaye sabko so english and hindi combined basically okay so let's uh, continue our understanding and i'll take a color can i move to the next part so basically uh, the two important component of a microscope and about the context of light microscopy one of that component is magnification power of a microscope okay so basically when we say microscope what is the job of a microscope for a layman it magnifies things or we can see things with the help of microscope which we cannot see with a naked eye now there is a fundamental difference between a lens that is you know magnifying glass which can also magnify something but a microscope is far advanced than only a magnifying glass सो so, अंतर है मैग्नीफाइंग ग्लास में सिर्फ छोटा चीज को बड़े करके दिखा सकते हैं मगर या फिर माइक्रोस्कोप में बहुत माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिज्म को हम देख सकते हैं जो कि मैग्नीफाइंग ग्लास से नहीं देख सकते सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ मैग्नीफिकेशन द मैग्नीफिकेशन अमाउंट फॉर अ माइक्रोस्कोप इज ह्यूज इट्स बिगर देन अदर रेडीली अवेलेबल मैग्नीफाइंग थिंग्स लाइक लेंसेस सिंगल लेंसेस ओके सो इट्स बेटर देन सो आई कैन से दैट इट्स बेटर देन मैग्नीफाइंग ग्लास ऑब्वियसली obviously because uh, we cannot see bacteria with magnifying glass but we can we can see bacteria with a light microscope so magnification is one of a crucial power of a microscope very important power but when we start to magnify something magnify any component any specimen let's say blood red blood cells we start magnifying red blood cells and we are seeing bigger image and so the image as it gets bigger why we are looking at a bigger image to get a clear idea and understanding of how things look okay naturally we don't know about a protozoa that cause amoebic dysentery but when we see it under a microscope suddenly we see the structures and those structures help us to understand how that particular protozoa behaves or that pathogen behaves that's why we need magnification power magnification power is very important for a microscope but along with magnification another important power is that that is resolution resolution okay now in very simple terms i can explain this thing with the camera what you can do is that you can zoom things you can zoom in zoom out if you zoom in you'll get a bigger bigger image but will that image result in a better resolution most of the time the answer is no the bigger we zoom in the image will be you know less with less resolution it's very difficult to get a bigger image with higher magnification with good resolution it costs money that's why a camera or any other lens or optic system like a microscope which has a very good magnification high magnification along with high resolution is a desired one but it requires more money to buy so what is the magnification power of a microscope the magnification power of a microscope is somewhat starting from 40x for a compound microscope we are talking about not a simple one we are talking about a compound microscope ranging from 40x to let's say 1000x generally all the microscopes available in the market belong to this category 40x to 1000x all total in a compound microscope magnification and about the magnification of a microscope we know that there are two components of a microscope that helps in the magnification so this is the let's say the specimen this is our specimen and what we have here uh, i'll change the color the black color here so this is a specimen that is placed and to magnify this specimen we have two component two lens system in a compound microscope the first lens system is this one known as objective lens and then there is a second lens known as eyepiece lens two set of lenses objective lens and eyepiece lens and generally the objective range uh, lens magnification ranges from 4x 10x 40x sometimes in some microscope 60x otherwise 100x these are the four types 
In the practical also we saw these are the four types of lenses attached to my microscope. These are for objective microscope magnification. Means these individual lenses can magnify this amount of the specimen size. While the eyepiece lens are fixed to generally 10x, it's most common, but it can be 5x, it can be 20x, it can be 15x. Depending upon your requirement, you may use different power eyepieces. It's a very simple lens, single magnification lens. So these are these two lenses. And the total magnification power of the microscope comes to the combination for both the magnification. So we multiply it. So if you are using 1 4x, so I will simply state it with the help of this table. Let's say objective eyepiece and this is let's say total magnification. This is what we are looking at. Okay. So let's say objective is 4x, eyepiece is 10x. So we will get total 40x magnification. Your microscope has four objective lenses. Alexa, stop. Similarly, if we go with 10x objective, with 10x eyepiece, we will get 100x image. Okay. If we get 40x objective, 10x eyepiece, we get 400x. And if we get 100x objective and 10x eyepiece, we can get 1000x. This is kind of Stereotypical, this is kind of simple idea of magnification for a microscope. Now, two important points that you need to consider while understanding microscope and magnification of microscope. When you understand the magnification of microscope, these two points are very important. One is the objective lens modify magnify kar hai. Dusra hai, eyepiece lens kya modify kar hai, magnify kar hai. So basically, sample size is very small, very, very small size sample. But objective lens is magnifying it first. So this first magnification is actually a true magnification is basically this image which is after the magnification of objective lens formed is a true image, a true inverted image. So let me write it here. The first magnification, first magnification resultant image is a true but inverted image. The second set of magnification which is done by eyepiece. So the second magnification is done, the magnified image that is already done by the objective lens. Magnification of that image. So even further magnification will make, so the inverted image will become normal, okay, non-inverted, but it is pseudo image. Ultimately the image that we see with the help of eyepiece at the end, that image is no longer a true image that becomes a pseudo image that becomes a pseudo image but this is non-inverted pseudo image got it that's why whatever things you see under the microscope it's not inverted it's not like a mirror image it's a straight one it gives us assumption of a straight one a feeling that this image is a straight one but in reality uh, it is a pseudo image not a real image a pseudo image this is a simple term of magnification that we need to understand for a microscope. Okay, And once you understand this idea, you can now get this sense that basically objective lens is not a single lens. There are multi lenses placed in the objective in order to give you this magnification, this much of magnification. One more thing that you need to understand is that as we want to magnify, now we are magnifying an image, but again that same problem will arise that is regarding the resolution. So the more we zoom in, the more we zoom in, we are basically looking at a pseudo image at the end. The resultant image is a pseudo image. So here the resultant image is a pseudo image. So the bigger the image looks, less resolution we will find. Resolution is not good. If you point not distinguish the point, you will not dot ke bich distinguishing the distinguishing. So to get a better resolution, we need to have a different set of understanding. So what is a microscopic resolution? Now, when you deal with microscopes for some time, you'll understand one thing that magnification is a secondary criteria because there is no point of having higher magnification without a good resolution. Magnification is what we need. That's why we build the microscope. But magnification without resolution is nothing. We need moderate magnification, but with highest resolution possible because those images will be crisp and clear to visualize. So here, we have here is this. 
a equation to calculate the resolution of a microscope okay so in this case what we are seeing an equation resolution equals to 0.61 into lambda divided by na now what are these components we want to understand this you need to know this in order to answer most of the mathematical question from this topic from the microscopy chapter now basically resolution is a power of a microscope to to be able to distinguish two objects as separate entities so the resolution power is calculated based on the minimum distance the minimum distance your microscope can separate two objects from each other for example let's say this is a point this is a point you see this two as a separate dots yes or no yes is it visible make them very close can you see it yes we can still distinguish it between two uh, dots fine i'll do another one now can you see it maybe still finding it having the same uh, sharing the same place but this one no our eye cannot distinguish between the distance between these two dots so after a certain time when we cannot differentiate between two objects as separate identity or separate entity so in that case we call it as a resolution power so the least distance that between these two dots at this moment is what we can distinguish as separate dots separate entities so that least distance will be termed as my resolution power right so the value of resolution the lower the value the better it is the lower the value the better it is okay resolution power of very small means it gives you very crisp result very crisp images okay so now what we need to see low resolution is what we desire what we need to obtain from a microscope so the resolution power depends on this formula 0.61 into lambda divided by na okay now what is this 0.61 this is a constant you don't need to bother about it 0.61 is a constant value apart from that this resolution depends on two other parameters one is the lambda which is wavelength of incident light wavelength of the light source that we are using so whatever light we are using to illuminate our object in a light microscopy that lights wavelength is the lambda value and divided by na na means numerical aperture numerical aperture of that particular microscope is something that we need to understand okay so as per this equation what we can draw what conclusion we can draw from this conclusion we can simply say one thing that so basically this is resolution or r value and what we want is the r value to be lower so think about it so if lambda how it's related and how numerical aperture is related so if the lambda value is high the r value will be high simple as that lambda is more so r value will be more that is bad so low lambda is good gives us better resolution got it second thing numerical aperture if the numerical aperture is high then what happens the overall value will be low because numerical aperture is something that is present in the bottom so higher numerical aperture means lower overall value so lower r that is what we desire so numerical aperture should be high that is good for us that is that means better resolution so these are the two things that you need to put in your brain lower wavelength of the light and higher numerical aperture results in better resolution of a microscope as simple as that there is nothing new in it now what do we mean by this numerical aperture that's what we need to understand what is numerical aperture numerical aperture is composed of two important parameters two parameters it is composed of what are the parameters basically it's the lens parameters and optical parameters that it is concerned about one is the angle angle of light that hits the objective lens because we are talking about numerical aperture for the lens that we are using the objective lens is the one which is magnifying the specimen for the first time so the angle at which the light hits the objective lens that is what is important at this moment 
which is generally counted as mu or considered as mu that is one thing and second thing is the refractive index of the medium refractive index of the medium so what we mean by refractive index of the medium basically let me take a different color here i need to utilize this to get different colors all the time here let's say blue color here okay so basically when we say uh, refractive index understand one thing this is the specimen this is the specimen in the slide and this is our objective lens here and the light is moving this is the arrow this is the direction of the light so what we can clearly see is that the the, the medium that is present between the objective lens and the specimen this is the medium and generally the medium is air the medium is air this refractive index matters a lot in terms of the numerical aperture to form the numerical aperture so higher refractive index will give us higher numerical aperture now imagine the refractive index of the medium that is air we generally consider this to be one near about one we consider it for a for a air environment because we are not running the microscopy in a vacuum chamber so it's air is there so we consider it as to be one but this numerical aperture can give us to a certain extent of this this uh, refractive index not numerical aperture sorry the refractive index of the air is considered to be one so this refractive index of one is giving us a maximum extent of a numerical aperture beyond that is not possible using this air as a medium that's why in different objective lenses you see 4x objective 10x objective 40x objective till 40x objective lens we can use air as a medium because that can still give us a quite okay resolution to work with good resolution to work with but beyond 40x if you go to 60x x 60 times magnification in objective and then 100x magnification in the objective that case we will struggle to get a good resolution with air as a medium so that is the reason when we work with 100x objective we use oil as a medium which has a higher refractive index more than what we see here so basically uh, let me take a color stick to so when we use oil the refractive index is really 1.25 which is more than the refractive index of the air then only we can see a better resolution otherwise you cannot see a proper resolution if we get any other substance any other medium which has more refractive index than oil that is 1.25 we could have get even better uh, resolution okay that is the idea of resolution of a microscope remember that so in the next slide here i am going to share the situation of this resolution power so try to understand this idea of numerical aperture here we are talking about numerical aperture two components the component number 1 is this angle at which the light is hitting the objective lens so basically in very simple terms if somebody ask me what is numerical aperture i can say that numerical aperture is the ability of any lens to gather light so higher the ability to gather light means higher numerical aperture so for example in this case there are three examples are written let's say this is 10x lens this is let's say 40x lens and this is let's say 100x objective lens we are looking at three different set of lenses the working distance for all these three different lenses are as per this diagram kind of means the 10x lens is generally placed far from the specimen the 40x will be little closer the 100x will be even more closer so why is so you can see that because that is how the light gathering capability is, is determined because the 100x the objective the opening to gather the light is very very small for 40 little big for 10 more big even for 4x objective it's the biggest okay a lot of light can go in that's why as we increase the magnification power we need to also increase the light intensity without that we cannot see the sample okay that's the reason now what else we know here is that this is the angle at which the light is hitting the objective lens 
that is known as mu okay so that is on part known as the value so see the mu for this one is 7 degree only for this one is 20 degree for 100x in this not exactly 100x but to give you an idea i am stating for mu is 60 degree here so the numerical aperture value for them is also changing the higher the value of the angle the higher the numerical aperture you can see the numerical aperture for this one is only 0 0.12 for this one is 0 0.34 and this one is 0 0.87 so that's how the numerical aperture is increasing. Although keeping the medium same in our mind. We're not changing the medium. But if we change the medium with higher refractive index, we can get even higher value of numerical aperture. Got it? Because in all these three cases, the medium is air. The moment we put oil in it, the index numerical aperture will increase. Another uh, picture that I want to show you here to give you a clear idea is this now basically the numerical aperture value the true numerical aperture value of modern day microscope objective lenses for a 4x lens it is 0.1 only for 10x lens 0.25 okay for 40x lens is 0.65 and for 100x lens it is 1.25 that's the value of numerical aperture 1.25 that's the idea of the typical numerical aperture value of modern day objective lenses in the microscope. Now you can clearly see as we are going higher magnification we need to increase the numerical aperture. Without that we cannot get a better resolution of the image. So with the help of this increasing magnification power these lenses also give us the potential not only to see objects in a bigger size but also to have a better resolution. That's the point. But in the 100x model in the 100x objective lens we can only obtain this much of numerical aperture value that is 1.25 if and only if if we use oil without oil this image will not be that crisp i'll show you the practical example of seeing same object without oil and with oil with 100x objective to give you an idea about it basically the common type of objective lenses of 100x cannot operate without oil but there are specific lenses designed particularly for meteorological purposes as well as uh, for some other fuel sense purpose also there are objective which can work without the oil in air but the resolution is not up to the mark so this is all about the resolution the role of numerical aperture in resolution we have a clear idea about the numerical aperture's role in the resolution so now we know a microscope is not all about magnification magnification is important obviously but along with that resolution is equally important resolution is equally important resolution and magnification both are needed both are required and a microscope will be considered superior if it has a higher magnification with a better resolution then we consider it as to be a very good microscope that's all about the basic understanding of the microscope resolution and microscope magnification. I believe we have a clear understanding of both microscope magnification and microscope resolution with the help of this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. And remember to watch all the lectures of this series because this series of lectures will immensely help you to handle a microscope theoretically as well as practically. Okay, bye.